so uh, this part of the program will introduce to us all uh, three writers who are right now taking part um, uh, they are right now taking the leap from writing uh, books to writing for television. And uh, um, please allow me to give a short introduction to what they are doing right now and to them, and then they will join me here up on stage. Uh, they are taking part in a 12-month program um, that Media Exchange has designed for public service broadcaster Sveriges Television, SVT. And the program's finale is actually taking place uh, right here and now at this event in Gothenburg. Uh, the aim of this program is to build skills for professionals who are active in other creative disciplines, so that they might easier move into writing for television. And there is a group of, in total, 13 distinguished uh, novelists, playwrights and journalists, um, and they have taken part in a range of sessions, lectures and workshops, as well as of, of open masterclasses. And, and the program has covered uh, writing processes and techniques for returning episodic drama or limited series. And uh, it's focusing on the key elements of storytelling, characterization and series structure. Uh, so, to share the takeaways of their experience, we will meet three of the, these writers. Um, and a short introduction of each and every one of you. <laughs> Johannes Anjuro is a poet and novelist who, whose latest novel, uh, De kommer att drunkna i sina mödrars tårar, English title The Rabbit Yard, uh, came out in 2017 and enjoyed great success, uh, as well as with readers and critics, as with uh, the jury for Sweden's most established award for uh, literary fiction, now that the Nobel Prize Committee has taken a break, uh, the August Award. Uh, and uh, then there is Malin Persson Giolito. Uh, she is a lawyer and writer uh, based in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, her latest novel, Störst av allt, English title Quicksand, was named both Best Swedish, Swedish Crime Novel and Best Nordic Crime Novel of the Year, and it is now being adapted to a TV series for Netflix. And Helena von Zweigberg uh, is an author and radio host. Her novel En klappar hjärtan, uh, English title The Heart Echoes, uh, was released in 2013 and Amazon bought the world rights, and it has been released so far in the U United States, the UK, and Australia. And her latest novel is called Total Skada, Total Loss. So please welcome uh, Johannes, Malin, and Helena on stage. Please take your seats. Ja, vad som helst. So, uh, great to have you here. Uh, and uh, let's start with uh, each and every, every one of you telling us what motivated you to take part in this workshop, to, to move from uh, the writing that you had done before uh, into television. Um, can start with you, Malin? I think that well, this might sound um, drastic, but I um, and I don't mean anything bad about the Netflix series that is coming out, which is very exciting. Uh, but I realized since I'm not writing the script for for this uh, adaptation, that I really wanted to be more involved in um, the actual adaptation of, of my own work. Um, because um, uh, I, think, I think Sally is a tremendous example of someone who, who keeps the control over her work from start to finish. She's now gone into directing to, to sort of make sure that her product remains the product that she, she sort of envisioned, I guess. I'm, 
And that is obviously the, a dream for any storytelling person. <laughs> and uh, so, and yes, and I also think that writers should try new, new things in order to evolve as writers. So I was, uh, I'm quite um, excited about this whole thing. I never look excited. I'm internalizing my excitement. <laughs> So, uh, what about you, Helena, and your uh, motivation? Uh, for a long time, I thought about it as a nightmare writing for television or film, because as a novelist, you have total control, and you, uh, nobody can say anything about it when you're writing it. Writing it. So, and I always felt like, oh, writing manuscripts is just other people telling you what to do, and they feel like they don't have a lot of doubts about what you're doing and and for me it has been very important to have my own tune or my own kind of style when I write but then again I saw so much good television was made suddenly it started a few years ago when I was really then intrigued and thought oh this is this is exciting and this is uh, maybe maybe I should try it. and then this of course uh, came up and I was like, oh, wonderful. <laughs> and it, 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 everybody said all the time that it was so completely different to write scripts. Oh, you can write novels, but it's completely different to write a script. And uh, then when we met with John, he said like, it's about storytelling, so it's just techniques and it's not that this huge leap that everybody mm -hmm. was talking about. So. All right, and what motivated you, Johannes? Um, I think quite similar things as uh, Helena was talking about. I think um, I think TV series sometimes have great literary qualities. There's some really great TV series. Uh, and me and Marlin spoke of a lunch about how TV and TV series are kind of the new, uh, kind of the novel of today mm -hmm. and then writing novels today is a bit like writing poetry 50 years ago in a strange way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is why I like writing novels to be honest like mm -hmm. that's why I like writing novels um, but but I'd like to write uh, try to write a TV series at some point maybe and then it's it's a great opportunity to 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 learn to use these tools that as, as Elena pointed out, we, we're also told quite often, no, 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 you don't know how to use the tools, right? Uh, which can be frustrating if you try to write for film or TV as a writer who's established and you worked for, you've been writing for many years, decades maybe, right? And then they tell you almost, I mean, they, it's almost like you, you, you don't know how to use this word processor, so mm -hmm. you can't write for TV or you can't write for for film, because it is about storytelling. So for me, the things that I've taken away more than anything is just like these tools for storytelling that I will definitely use when I write novels, when I write children's books, when I write anything. Mm. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, I must. I have to compliment the, this whole idea of inviting colleagues of ours. We have to to sort of put us in the same room because it's it's an amazing creative room when you have colleagues that you wouldn't meet and to just talk about storytelling it's amazing and and i remember one of the first stories when when i was first introduced to this whole world of of uh, tv series making was that um there is a saying among among these creators that to invite the writer into the the process of 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 making um, making the the film or the it's like uh, inviting a prostitute for breakfast, and that attitude is so sad. And and this whole project shows the 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 opposite. It's like you should, and also Sally talked a lot about that. How the the, the actors want the writer to be there. The 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 people want to to get into our head. Uh, so invite us for dinner, goddammit. And that's what we've been invited for, I think, in this whole uh, course that uh, it's, it's been, um, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. We, we'll get back to the, the creative team maybe a bit later, but uh, could you first tell, tell us something about what you discovered um, uh, with the if there, but the, with the differences that uh, still exist between writing the way you used to write your books and the, the, the way you write uh, a storyline for a TV drama. Can you say something about uh, the differences, even if, they are, if the gap is not that wide? It's about the word process. <laughs> the, the, the sort of... No, but it is funny that it's reassuring that the differences aren't that big. Mm. And that makes you want to, to take the leap. Mm. Uh, because obviously, I mean, I, I've talked a lot with um, um, the team at SVT about this. I want to know what kind of ord behandlings program are you using? What kind of, how many words, what is the, what's the heading here? That's what you, you want these very Practical. specific tools. Mm -hmm. And then just let me be and I'll do the writing. I know that part. I just want to get, and that's, so it's been very reassuring. With that said, I mean, I, I haven't written a script yet, so <laughs> mm -hmm. I just think I can. <laughs> I'm in that self-assured mo mode of... Mm -hmm. uh, what do you say about the, the differences? Uh, for me, writing is, uh, I, I um, um, investigate my own stories while, while I'm writing a novel. I mean, I, I, I try to find things meanwhile. So for me, it has always been hard to write a script because it's so, it's so numb in one way. It's just like, well, she walks out to the door and then it's just like, oh, yes. I, I read, I read what, I, what I write and I say this is nothing. I mean, this is, doesn't say anything. But during these uh, events when we have met, I have learned that I can write it down first and then I can do a manuscript for my own writing. Or, oh well, it's easier for me to find a technique to really see things in front of me. And John has used some kind of poetic words when he is talking about into the woodlands, and you know, it's not this. It has always been this uh, very harsh words when you talk about scripts. It's like you know you have to make the ten minutes like that. that and it's always it doesn't get to me. So he has been told me to uh, learn me to have another kind of way to. Approaching it, and John is John York, the our teacher. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and uh, can I say something as well? Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> you know, when I was in school, I was very good at I was very good at the tests where you had to write your answer, like describe why why World War One started. Because I could always kind of, even if I didn't know the answer, I could kind of cheat a little bit. And writing novels and writing poetry has, there's a kind of mercy to it. Because you can, there's so many things that can carry a page or carry a scene. And I think that writing for the screen is more ruthless for many reasons. Because it's, there's somebody sitting there just reading it and counting the money they have to spend, right? Um, and it's also something, somebody has to sort of embody it and you have, there is something more ruthless about it. So it, it, for me, it's been good to learn these tools of like, there was this thing that Sally uh, said this morning when we had a, a workshop. She said, every moment on the screen is precious and don't waste it. Mm. Um, because writing a novel is precious too, but you can sort of linger more in things and be a bit more, but more, you can take some liberties that you can't, I think, when you write for the screen. And so, and so for that reason, it's been really good to get those, here's how you really create drama. Because for me, I shy away from it as a novelist. Like you have to have somebody kick in the door and say, get on the floor, everybody. And then, <laughs> mm. Kind of like the scene that we saw. So mm. I pull away from writing those things. And I, I think that's a negative for me when I try to write for the scene. Or for the, for the screen, so for me that's that's like the difference. It's a bit more ruthless. Mm. It's a bit more ruthless somehow. You have to, you know, we say this thing: kill your darlings. You have to kill 
a lot more darlings. Yeah, you have already touched upon uh, this, uh, the your personal style as writers uh, a little bit. How how to bring that into because you have very distinct voices, I think, uh, as writers. Your Johannes uh, lyrical style and uh, Helena with all your nuances in relationships and uh, Marlin's kind of uh, drastic to the point uh, uh, style somehow. Can you do, do you? Is this hard to? Are you leaving it behind, or or can you um, uh, draw something from that when you're writing storylines and eventually scripts? I can start. <laughs> no, I think that as a suspense writer, if that is what I am, Sorry, as, a as a suspense yeah, writer, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're often criticized by being too dependent on the sort of given structure of a suspense novel. Uh, you're supposed to follow a certain scheme in order to check into the category of, of suspense writing. I've, always, I've often been criticized for not sort of sticking to that um, to that structure, to trying to do stuff that is not easily cat categorized as suspense or crime or what have you. And so in that sense, I think it's extremely liberating to come into a more, because the TV series that we see today, like Happy Valley, for instance, it's not a, it's not a police series, it's not a crime series to me. It's a it's a relationship drama. It's a it's a story of, but it's it's it can be both, and it doesn't have to be categorized. So that, to a certain ex extent, is more liberating. It's like I don't even if I must say that I've never bothered. I don't even listen to the people that tell me how to structure my novels because you can't work that way. So, it's liberating in theory, uh, but it's also quite liberating that there is a structure. Because it's like corsets. You you have this. If you get commissioned to to write six episodes times uh, forty five minutes, uh, it's supposed to be this. Then you just follow the structure, and that is. Then you don't have to spend like I do two and a half years in order to sort of think about what perspective is th is this story going to be told through. Mm. So it's both. It's both liberating to sort of leave uh, a structured word, but also a world, and but also to sort of find the structure, this corset. Mm -hmm. But then you uh, you have another day, and you hate the structure, and you just want to die. That's creative process. So mm -hmm. so I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, now you have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, well, for me, uh, I write. I mean, I always usually write about very everyday kind of moments, but underneath there's this kind of Shakespearean dark feelings or something. And if you write about a marriage and you, there's this kind of conversation between the mother and the father, oh, should the children really have a ice cream now too, today as well? And it's just like, it's nothing and it's, but everyone who has been in this situation know that it's a big question and it's really a war. You're seeing a war coming towards you. And to, to put these things in film is very, or a TV series, very hard because it's like nothing happens really. I always felt that, that mm. oh, this, this is nothing happening, but it's so much happening. So for me, it's been, it's been very useful to learn a kind of technique to um, put this into a, a drama mm. situation, whereas where the drama is so much inside you. So, well, that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah, and for you, Johannes? Uh. Um. I think if, if, if or when or if I, I write a TV series, um, it will be something that's in my voice. Like I don't think it, it, I don't think it would be meaningful to try to change and write a TV series. I don't. I also think that the brilliant thing about this uh, this project and the idea behind it is that for us to write something in, in our respective voices. Uh, because one could maybe say that in Sweden there is quite a lot of at least I feel like that. So I feel like there's a lot of 
Beck TV series, you know? Like uh, crime fiction. Yeah, crime fiction, but also crime fiction in a specific, like, let's make a Swedish crime fiction show, kind of. Mm. I say that as somebody that does not watch a lot of it, so take it with a grain of salt. But, uh, but yeah, I think it will be something in, in, in my voice. And um, I agree with Helena that, that the thing that we've learned is to, to take those internal things. I think, if, I think one of the things that I enjoy doing is writing people seeing the trees move like da 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 something. The sky looked like, like using poetic metaphors to, to reveal some inner state, um, which you can do as a cinematographer. Right, but you can't. It's difficult to do it as a writer. So you have to make it into actions and events and things that happen. Uh, and that's something that particularly John York talked a lot about. I feel like like how to make characters reveal themselves through plot and these type of things. So yeah, it's been it's been very very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, you are all if i understand correctly working on your own project you brought like your own ideas to work on in this program right um uh, how did you choose which idea to d to d develop further in this program and can you also maybe tell us a bit what what you think what does it take for an idea to hold up for a serious development I mean, that was obviously one of the questions that at least I came into this program with. Like, what do I need to think about? I mean, I can, since I am, I am at least within this framework, I'm working on my own uh, novels. Um, and, um, and it's one thing that I have in my head, to me, this is what have you. But I want to know if that's true. What kind of, what is the story? What does the story need in order to become a, let's say, a six-episode series um, with an ending and a and a beginning? But, uh, but can I? But I, I must. I have to say though. I have to come back to what uh, Johanna said about what we bring in. Because obviously we want to sort of stay the voice that we have, if we have one, good days. I think all writers think that they have a particular voice. And you want to bring that in. And how do you do that when you have to explain your story to someone completely different from a reader? Because a reader is a very, is a very sort of, um, is a very good, Person. Person. Yeah. <laughs> because they can, you give the story to the reader mm -hmm. and you don't really have to care about what the reader does with the story. That's part of the magic with novels. Mm -hmm. But when you write a script, you have to think about what the reader will read. It's like being a lawyer, mind you. It's like, writing instructions and making sure that the reader f reads the same thing mm -hmm. as you wrote, mm -hmm. which is a challenge that is, that is completely different. I'm not saying it's more difficult or easier, it's just different. Mm -hmm. And it's been tremendous to be in this room with people that have, all have their own voices and their own backgrounds. And, and I think we're going to talk about collaborative uh, writing afterwards, maybe, touch upon that. Uh, well, bit. yeah, I thought we should um, uh, Sorry. have time, I, yeah. time to talk about that during this. I think we only have five minutes left. So, so we go yeah. into that too, if you, if you like, now, yeah. Yeah, no, but I, because I, that is what I will bring home. I mean, this, this incredible experience of being in this. Uh, I, were we 13 people around the table? That sounds like a, an unhappy number, but <laughs> it was a terrific, a lucky number, I, I think, because people from all over the creative sort of scene, and, um, and how does a poet write dialogues? How does a relationship novelist write thriller? Because, because to me, everything comes down to, to building a suspense story to a certain extent. It's um, Halifax, the, the last tango in Halifax, is, is, is like a thriller, but it's about relationships. That's, that's, and when you start looking at these 
uh, motion pictures differently, like with an eye of what did she do there, <laughs> then you see different things. It's, it's been extremely rewarding. Mm. So uh, please, uh, Helena and Johannes, uh, some, uh, something about your project and your findings of, of, uh, on what st kind of story to, to um, develop into a TV series. Yeah, for me, one of the things uh, on the, uh, these meetings have been to just try to talk about what I'm doing. Because for a novelist, it's nothing. I don't ever do that. I mean, I'm so... Because I'm always afraid that the energy from the project is sipping out. So I can't... I have to, to have it inside the story. So for me, when you say, talk about something, the things you're doing, I'm just like, no. <laughs> Please. Mm. No, I don't, I, because it's very, it's yeah, very course, hard to, yeah, to yeah. talk about what I'm doing. But I've learned some dur during these meetings that we really ha could ha have this conversation about what we are doing, about writing, about stories. And it's been really li liberating for me to find that you can do that and the energy could still be inside the project. So this is a question to all three of you, but has this workshop been like a, a preparation for maybe collaborative writing in TV uh, where, where you are, when you are writing only by yourself as novelists and poets? Is this, ha has it been like a good experience for maybe write something together with someone for TV? Uh, it could be. It's mm -hmm. a quick answer, but yeah, I could. Be. <laughs> I've written collaboratively, Karabik, however you say that, before with someone else, mm -hmm. uh, which is always interesting. And uh, to me, I've just been given a lot of new tools, which have been really fun and productive to, to use and work with. And I think it is good to, I think it's good to share the terms and the terminology and the ideas of, for example, structure when you're going to work with someone. So it would be easier for somebody now to pair me up with, with a, a TV writer. It would be easier because we could talk about, so we need to have a midpoint and he wouldn't have to explain or she wouldn't have to explain to me, oh, the midpoint is like this point of no return where this thing happens because there could be five axes. One way to look at it, they don't have to explain it because we share a terminology. Um, we would have some stage directions and you kind of write it like this, don't write it like that. We, so yeah, it's, it definitely has been good to get the terminology and the tools, so yeah, yes. Uh, and what about the writer's role, finally, in the, in the process of, cre of the creation of the TV drama? Uh, do you have like new I insights in that? You were talking about how you may, may, may have felt like writers were, as we say in Sweden, <laughs> invited with the elbow. They were n not like... <laughs> no, no, no. I, I have to... That was a story that I was being told. I All mean, right. I have been very much included in, in the work with the adaptation of my novel, No Shadow Shall Fall Over. But it's also... S Sally talked a lot about being... Um, not being afraid of taking control over what you want. And um, to me, it's been a process of trying to figure out what I want. Because you can be a writer that says, well, I sell my rights, do whatever you want with it. If you want to do Danish porn out of my novel, that's fine, my bank account is right here. <laughs> and then you leave. But, uh, and, and that is fine. I mean, I, I, to a certain extent, envy people that do that. My dad does that, and, and I envy him tremendously. Mm -hmm. and, but you have to figure out what you want. What, what kind of control do you want to have in the process? Are you the kind of writer that never wants to come into a writer's room with other people having opinions on what you write in a very early stage? Because we, I think we all writers have this, the magic is going to disappear if, if I talk to anyone to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Does, is it going to go away or is it going to enrich me? And I think that I'm, I want to get into that writer's room. I really do. That's what I've learned about myself. It's been very therapeutic. <laughs> I never have to go to a psychoanalyst again. Do you have any final additions, Helena and Johannes, uh, about your, like, any... Big insights from from this tw these twelve 
months? No, but I, I agree about this. Uh, be wanted to be in a writer's room. I thought I would really don't want to go there, but I really want to be in a writer's room. But th that you should pick very special persons. Hmm. I mean, just have a few people that you really believe in. and Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, time is up. But uh, Anna Kronemann uh, wants to say something. Please. No, hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to say that it has been, uh, has been an amazing experience to do this. It was 13 writers. It was a very bad number. I agree to that. I just wanted to mention who the other ones were, because they're actually in the yeah. audience, many of them. It was Annika Persson. It was uh, Rochta uh, Sekersus. It was Andreas T. Olsson. It was Tuva Alsterdal. It was Andreas Norman. And also Gela Tamas, Jens Lapidus, and Niklas Orenius, because they're not here. So I just wanted to mention their names. That was it. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your experiences you. with us. Thank you. So thank you to the panel and thank you to Merit. Um, we're just going to take another break now. Uh, before we do, I just wanted to thank again Media Exchange.